Invasive species. It may sound like something out of a science fiction movie, but they're very real. There's two main types of invasive species. One would be a native, and the other would be an exotic. An exotic invasives are the ones that come from someplace else get inoculated into an area because we've planted them or introduced them somehow, and then eventually just keep growing so much that they start shoving out other species. We want to maintain biodiversity. The exotics make things look more homogeneous. In South Florida, giant African snails have become a major concern. The biggest snail we found here, it was close to seven inches. The snails threaten native species because of their voracious appetite. They feast on at least 500 plant species and their ability to rapidly reproduce. In September 2014, only in one house we found more than 4,000 snails. They also pose a threat to people. The human and animal health threat has been confirmed by the CDC, of the presence of Angiostrongulus cantonensis, which can lead to a very rare form of meningitis, and there is no cure for that. Often, it's animals that get people's attention. Invasive species like Nile monitor lizards, Burmese pythons, and lionfish are well known to many Floridians. But even benign looking plants can pose serious threats to our native ecosystems. This plant right here is Brazilian pepper. It's in among some other trees, oaks, etc. I'm not touching it on purpose because I might react very much like people would react with poison ivy. This is on the edge of a wetland and it's a rather nice cypress dome. I'm thinking it's a beautiful wetland. The problem is that Brazilian pepper grows well on the edge of those wet soils and eventually will crowd out a lot of the other plants here and take over this space. Also notice that it's a fairly empty zone right here. That might very well be to, to the chemical rain that comes down from this plant that inhibits other plants. The Brazilian pepper tree was brought to the U.S. as a nursery plant in the 19th century but it long ago escaped backyards and has thrived in central Florida. It's over 700,000 acres, probably more like 750,000 acres now that is occupied by Brazilian pepper. And that's very comparable to the combined two counties of Orange and Seminole counties. As with many invasives, eradicating Brazilian pepper is a difficult task. To get rid of this means you have to come in here and cut this, probably drag those branches out of here, very really carefully closed so you're not breaking out in a rash from this chemical. But then it usually requires some follow-up because it can re-sprout. And so one of the things that people will do is to treat that stump with a chemical. That requires some training and some permits because you can't necessarily just spray the stuff into a wetland. Prevention is often a much cheaper alternative, but it requires the effort of many individuals. The average homeowner can just think about the kinds of plants that they might be planting in the yard, the ones that would grow too fast and spread too far. We can think about it in terms of the animals that we choose to own as pets. We can think about what we do with those animals when we're tired of feeding these large things. Invasive species can have a significant economic impact, especially when they threaten agricultural products. But they threaten something even more precious to many Floridians. We need to think about what do we want our world to look like? And how much do we have responsibility for that world? We have to think about how much are we wishing to retain some of the things that we found valuable when we first started thinking about moving to Florida or when we, we had families that grew up here. The things that make Florida different from other parts of the world will be kind of smudged and erased by invasive species from lots of other parts of the world that show up here. And so we will lose this unique corner of the world. That should matter to us, fundamentally. Watch full episodes of SciTech Central Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. on WUCF-TV.